Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the second video in my backyard plant propagation series, season two, I guess. Uh, I, in the first one, I built this little wooden frame at the bottom of this new greenhouse, and I put these bent rails, metal rails, on the, on the top right here. Definitely want to go back and take a look at that video. Also, last year's series has much more information than I'm putting in this one, so kind of important to probably go back and take a look at that. I built a much simpler house in, in that series. Today, I'm expanding the irrigation, uh, and tomorrow, I'm just immediately putting up another video on the end walls. I had said I was going to do those two together, but the irrigation is the most important part by far. So in this video, I'm putting this plastic down, which is already down, as you can see behind me, and the irrigation expanded, which you can see behind me, but I'm going to go through how I did that in just a minute. Uh, it's very important that these irrigation heads are level so that the water comes out uh, when, when the clock turns on uh, and the water comes out, they all come on at the exact same time. I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, this is a very basic system. Uh, you need a water supply, so that can be from a fa your faucet on your house, or in my case, I have an irrigation system, so I'm able just to tap into that. And then you have a gate between the water supply and uh, the mist heads that are in the irrigation house. And called a valve, uh, and it's an electric valve, and then we need a clock, and that clock will turn open and close that valve when we need it to be opened and closed, and we need very fine control of it, so we have to have a clock that will work in seconds, because we only want to turn this on for just a few seconds at the time and then turn it off. Five, six, seven minutes later, turn it back on for a few seconds and turn it back off. Not a lot of clocks that'll do that. The clock that I'm using here will. And so, like I say, then we have the valve, and then we have these mist nozzles here. All of this stuff I have linked in the bottom of the description, but those three basic parts, that's really all we're talking about here is a clock that will work in seconds, some sort of thing that divides the water supply from where we're supplying it to, and then mist nozzles that will take your water and turn it into teeny tiny little droplets. So it will just evenly cover your unrooted cuttings uh, and then dry, as soon as it dries off, we'll do it one more time, just like that over and over and over again. The house really doesn't matter all that much. It could be a PVC house, it can be this metal house, it can be a lean-to against the fence over there. I could do a lean-to on my house over here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the irrigation is the most important part. So let me show you how that's done. So I think Holly's gonna be out here on patrol while I work on this irrigation. I'm kind of lucky from having the nursery, uh, I can go and shop for my own PVC parts. So this is all stuff left over from the nursery and my, uh, 40 other greenhouses I've built over the years. Uh, last year, this irrigation came in here, went into that little small house, which is outlined by this little gravel bed right here, and it went straight in there. What I did here was I just put an elbow on it and moved it over to here. It's got an extension on it because I'm gonna run some drip irrigation for another project I have going on, and this stuff's going, actually gonna go in the ground at that point. Uh, once I figure out how big of a box I need, I think I'm gonna need end up needing the valve for this and then two additional valves for the drip irrigation. But that's where I'm going with that. Uh, so that slides this over to this edge and it actually lines up almost perfect with the middle. The spacing is absolutely perfect for three rows, uh, kind of unplanned. Currently, there were two rows of two uh, irrigation heads here. I'm going to go to three rows of three. I'm gonna leave the upper part there uh, unirrigated, like I had said. I need to pull this gravel back, pull this plastic back, uh, put down a new piece of plastic, and then uh, I'll go in here and uh, make some cuts into this existing piece. I don't know if you remember from last year's videos, if you've watched last year's series, the top of these half inch uh, PVC risers right here, they all have to be level, okay? I have to level nine of them. It would actually be easier probably for me to rebuild this thing than what I'm about to do but I've got to get these four level and then the other five that I'm putting in. Uh, it's very, very important that the when the water is off, that it sits right at the top of these. If you have a low one, like currently this one's kind of lower than the rest, the water would just drip out of here in between irrigation cycles, okay? So then the upper one right there, which is the high one right now, the water will be way down, you know, maybe an inch or so below the top so when the water comes back on, it's instantly gonna come back out of this one. And this one right here is gonna be delayed by a second or two. And if we're only running a three or four or five second cycle, you can see where that one's not going to get the same amount of water. So the main thing is these nine irrigation heads, uh, each of them have to be level.
I got the plastic down and I can't stress enough how important a barrier between the native soil and your attempt at rooting cuttings is. Uh, you can get away with it for a year without having a barrier between the soil and your trays or whatever method is you're using to uh, root cuttings. You can get away with it for a little while, but eventually things in that soil will migrate up into the house and cause you all kinds of root rot problems. I uh, attached the old system in and those four heads are level. I may have to use the gravel when I put the gravel in here to do a little bit of leveling. And I don't know if you can see that bead is perfectly in the middle. I added the third head right here. So these are all right at 30 inches apart. I'm gonna cut into here. This is, this, this is the pieces I have. So this is gonna look a little weird when I'm done, but the pieces I had available to me. I'm gonna put a, a T in here and I'm gonna come out to there. I'm gonna come over to here, put the head right there for having three right there. And then I'm gonna run it over to that edge and put the three in right there. So the nine risers are in and they're all level across the top. I used a four foot level. I actually leveled them all off of that center one right there. Before we put the mist heads back on, I'm going to uh, open this valve up and make sure that we wash any glue or pebbles or anything that might have washed into here out. And uh, frequently the water won't make it all the way up to that one when you don't have any irrigation heads on. So I'll run it for a second, flush it out. I'll turn it off. I'll put about four of these mist head nozzles on it and that'll force water up to that top one. That's the one we definitely wanna make sure it's cleaned out. So that's with four of the nozzles on that forced enough water up to there. I'm gonna go ahead and put maybe four more on and leave that one off just to shoot water way up in the air and get the rocks and everything out of there. Okay, so this is this year's version of the mist irrigation. Uh, and that's nine heads running. I have a lot of pressure on my irrigation system. Uh, if you were hooking this up to your house, and when I did the videos last year, I talked about hooking it up to a faucet. I don't think you could run more than about four, uh, depending on your pressure, obviously, and the volume of water you have coming out of your faucets. I don't think you'd run more than four of these. So last year's house, uh, but I could probably run 15 or 20 of these quite well, but you can see how fine a mist this has. You can run nine with low pressure, but the, uh, the water comes out with, in larger droplets, and that's not that great. We want it as fine as possible. And the more pressure there is on these misters, the finer the water actually comes out. So I'm gonna slow down and talk you through how this irrigation works real quick. Like any other irrigation system, it has a clock right here. Uh, like I told you, this clock has uh, one special thing, is that it can run in seconds. Uh, meaning that we can turn this clock on for five seconds or 10 seconds or 12 seconds and then turn it right back off. Most clocks uh, only go down to minutes and we definitely cannot uh, put minutes of water on our unrooted cuttings here or we will definitely drown them and kill them. So this clock works, uh, allows us to turn it down to seconds and then we can turn it back on every five or seven or eight or 10 minutes uh, depending on what, what our needs are for three and five and eight and 10 seconds at the time. So it works quite well for that. Okay, it is connected to an electric valve here and then it's connected to my water line. You can connect this to a faucet, but like I said, you, I don't think you'll be able to run very many uh, irrigation heads, which is fine. You still be able to run the system, no problem. But you need an electric gate, basically is what this amounts to. This electric valve is just a gate between the water supply and it getting uh, to these mister heads. And that clock, you know, like I say, we'll, we'll have it come on every six minutes or so, and it'll run for three or five or six seconds or whatever we're needing. And it's got two wires on it. One runs back uh, to a common, what's called a common, they all run together if you had multiple valves. The other one is for the individual valve itself. Those wires run back to the clock right here. And uh, the white one right here, I've got some ants that were trying to build in here and I'm just letting them move out. I've opened it up. They've realized that they've made a mistake and they're all moving out. I'm gonna leave them be while I do this. Uh, the white wire coming back in here is the common wire and every valve would just be wired back to that same spot for a common. And then uh, each valve would go to a different valve spot right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is a six zone clock. I'm only running one zone on it right now, but I could hook up six valves if I wanted to. And then the clock, uh, I went through all the settings on this one last year, and I'll do that again uh, before we start. But if I go back, I can actually go through the 
settings here, I realize it's sideways and you won't be able to see this, but I'll go to manual right here and I hit on and it will actually turn it on the same settings I had last year. That was maybe three seconds or so, uh, maybe five seconds. I don't remember uh, that it just came on and turned off. That's the settings I had on it last year. So that works quite well if you need to run it manually occasionally or see that it's working. That's the cover for that. That's the cover for that. And I had put this in a box last year and I ran electrical out here so that I could keep it plugged in. It also works off of batteries. So it actually doesn't need a plug, but it's certainly easy to have that there. And then I've unplugged this when I've needed to uh, have, have an extra outlet out in my backyard. So that's worked pretty well. There is a little thumb screw on the valve right here. You can, uh, turn it on and off manually like this. There it is, I'm probably gonna get water on the lens, but there it is, and I'll turn that back off. And you can see how well that works. And we just have great coverage. These are 30 inches apart, and that's just perfect coverage. I have uh, these Mr. Heads linked in the description of this video. Uh, it's from a, a greenhouse supplier. It's the only place I can find this one. There are a lot of different types of these Mr. Heads. Uh, I've, always, I've always really liked this one. It's very versatile. I can pop the tops off of them very easily like this and clean them out. Frequently, you'll end up with a little piece of plastic or something in there we missed while we were uh, um, doing construction on it. And so that's pretty easy to clean out and pops right back on just like that. And they're 360 degrees, but they don't work as well on the back side right here where, uh, where that piece is. And so I usually try to get them going all in the same direction so that they overlap behind one another a little bit. You could probably go as much as, if you had great pressure like I do, maybe 36 inches apart, but I've, I've always used 30. That seems to work and two trays fit between them uh, well like that. You'll see that in later videos. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna turn right around and put the end wall video up tomorrow and uh, uh, batten up a few things that still need to be battened up on it and then uh, I'll probably wait to put the plastic on it until right when we're going to start to do rooted cuttings. And I'm, like I say, I'm still probably maybe... Uh, this ligustrum right here behind me, I can see is starting to harden off a little bit. Uh, the uh, Probably needs another week or so, and we can just get started on these cuttings uh, uh, very quickly. I've got a uh, shade cloth coming from uh, Amazon, and I've linked that in the description of that one that will cover this house perfectly. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to see upcoming videos.